Hey guys from Old Quail Run Farm. I just wanted to take a few minutes and talk about wine. And I, you know, wine 101, whatever you want to call it. The reason I started Wine Club at Bon Appetit, y'all, was that I want so many people to feel comfortable with wine and that it is not intimidating, that they can ask questions, that they can speak about it and not feel like um, they're not speaking intelligently. We created the wine club so that you could enjoy white and red, you could educate yourself on the different types of wine, the different types of glasses, how you taste wine, what you pair it with, all of those great things. So, um, you know, I didn't become really passionate about wine till probably eight or nine years ago, somewhere in there. Um, and in fact, up until then, I really, you know, was totally fine with drinking some yellowtail mm -hmm. <laughs> from the grocery store. But um, not that that's not fine, and I want y'all to, to know. Now, I will say my friends call me a wine snob. I do not feel that I'm a wine snob. I just feel like I've learned enough and learned enough about the different types of wine and where wine is grown and where certain types of wine are best from that you can pick more intelligently when you're at a wine store. So if you, for instance, are looking for a Pinot Noir, you're going to, in a wine store or on a menu in a restaurant, you're gonna look for a Pinot Noir from Oregon because Oregon produces the best Pinots, specifically Willamette Valley. So, um, and they are very well known for their Pinot Noirs. So, same vein, uh, old vine Zins. If you love Zinfandels, man, you're going to get the best bang for your buck from Lodi, California. Um, a lot of people, if there's a cab from Napa on a menu, that's what they're going for because you know that you're consistently going to get a great Cabernet out of Napa. And all of that has to do with the longitude and latitude and the ocean breeze and the soil and all of those things that we could go on for hours about, but I'm not gonna bore you. Um, the cool thing about growing in America and the different types of grapes that are grown in America is the wineries literally will, um, they check their longitude lines in Europe where those grapes originated from, okay? That's how you know where certain grapes are gonna grow the best because it's the same um, environment. It's the same weather patterns, all of that sort of thing. So, um, you know, I can go on about Spanish wines. We could do a whole nother series on Spanish wines, um, German wines, all of those sort of things. But today I just wanted to kind of do a 101 and talk about these six basic types of wine. Today I'm, uh, tasting or showing uh, Lang Twins, this is uh, their Sandpoint brain, and we carry all of these in our store. Y'all, these wines are $9.99, okay? So this is not expensive wine. But, um, so the main, there's six types of wines in this line that we carry, uh, three whites and three reds, okay? So I want you to know and understand that, you know, if you're going to pick a Sauvignon Blanc, no matter what brand you pick, um, a Sauvignon Blanc is typically going to be very citrus and grapefruit forward, okay? So Sauvignon Blanc is great in the summer. I put this in my Italian spritz cocktail um, because it goes really well with orange. So um, flavor, you know, palette or whatever you want to call it of Sauvignon Blanc is always typically going to be very citrusy and grapefruit forward. A Chardonnay, depending on where the Chardonnay comes from, but um, specifically California Chardonnays most of the time are going to be kind of your heavier white, your uh, warmer white. So um, a lot of times Sauvignon Blancs and Pinot Grigios, or in this case today I've got a Chenin Blanc, those are typically um, barreled in stainless steel. They're aged in stainless steel, so they don't ever get, um, they're not ever in an oak barrel. But Chardonnay is typically uh, made in tanks, made, maybe put in stainless steel for a while, but Chardonnays are typically always put into 
um, an oak barrel to give it the warmth and buttery, um, yummy tones of that deeper, richer white, okay? So, um, but there's also, you know, there's Chardonnays from Italy and from all over that they only will barrel in cement or stainless, and so it's going to be crisper, it's going to be lighter, it's not going to be as buttery and heavy on your tongue, okay? And then on reds, you know, the three basic reds you're going to see everywhere is going to be a Pinot Noir, um, this is a Cabernet, and this is a Merlot. So in the world of wine, if you typically say, I'm just a white drinker, then uh, Pinot Noir is usually called the bridge for white drinkers into red wine, okay? A Pinot Noir is going to be more light, uh, definitely not heavy on tannins, and it's just not going to be bold. It's gonna be lighter and smoother on the tongue. Then Merlot would be your next level of darkness. <laughs> if you want to call it, we always say, you know, we've gone to the dark side if you if you love deep reds like I do. So um, I definitely live in the dark side. 12 months out of the year, I will drink red wine. I love it. Um, but Merlot is going to be your next level of kind of heaviness in wine. And then your Cabernet is going to be your darkest and uh, fullest bodied wine out of these three. Okay. So Pinot Noir is one that if you're just trying out reds, you might want to try a Pinot Noir. Then you would want to move to a Merlot and then a Cabernet. All right. So the other couple of things I wanted to talk about is this craziness. Okay. So a lot of people become intimidated and worry about um, what glass do I put it in? I don't know what to put things in. Uh, first of all, this is... Um, it's beautiful, but it does do something, okay? It is important. So if you've got especially a full-bodied wine, um, definitely your Cabernets, your Zinfandels, um, those sorts of wines, it's always best to aerate those wines before you, you don't want to just open your bottle and then drink straight out of the bottle. Now you can, but um, typically it's going to be better for the wine if you will aerate it. Now, this beautiful thing is really cool. Isn't that neat how you can do this? Doing this and turning it like this is gonna aerate that wine a little bit. At the very least, when you um, open a really good bottle of red wine, it's always good to at least cork it. Most of the time I will um, open a bottle of red wine and let it sit. Like I'll come in from the afternoon and uh, we have a, I have my wine and coffee bar downstairs. I'll open a bottle and let it sit while I come up here and start dinner. It'll probably be open for a good 30 minutes to an hour before I even pour my first glass just because it allows air to go um, down into the bottle and open that wine up. So this, actually, when you, when you get into aerators and um, vessels like this, this actually would make that process a whole lot faster. If you have the time and the ability to decanter your wine, it's always just going to let it smooth out and get some air in there and let it breathe so that it's going to fall better on your tongue um, if you're able to do that. The, you know, the other thing about wine that I really, really want to uh, talk about is wine is made to go with food. And that is why I fell in love with wine. So, um, because I love food so much and I began to, um, when I began to educate myself about wine and how it goes with food, it totally changed wine for me. So, um, I can literally look at a bottle of wine now most of the time and pretty quickly, especially after a taste, um, tell you what that wine's going to pair really well with. If it's, you know, a goat cheese and pear slices and a crostini, whatever it is, very simple, um, it just, it totally changes the taste of your wine. So at Wine Club, for instance, we do a taste of, we smell the whites. So you're always going to want to smell and see what it is that you smell. Okay. 
So um, I'm gonna pour this white into this stemmed glass. And this is a smaller stemmed glass. This is a white wine glass. This one cracks me up. So this is my favorite wine glass in my house. And I have a whole set of these because um, the very first time I went over to Italy and you sit down and they just ask red or white when you sit down at a restaurant and they ask you if you want um, still or bubbly water. So we, um, of course, said red, but they bring, this is what you drink wine out of in Italy. So I ordered these, got them in, and I literally, if I'm not entertaining and I'm just at home by myself, this is what I'm drinking my red wine out of. I love these glasses. So, but I also will drink white wine out of them. It's, it's, um, totally doesn't matter. It's just a fun at home way to, um, it reminds me of Italy. So, um, with white wine, these are both white wine glasses. They have a smaller body to them. See how much wider body these are. And so because the white wines don't need to aerate as much. So that is the reason you're going to get more swooshing area, more aerating area out of these larger glasses than these small glasses. The white wine doesn't need it. So, um, you know, you're going to smell the wine. You're going to take it in. Tell me what you smell on this one. I immediately smell, I smell lemons. I smell shortbread and I smell grass. Ooh, really? yeah, it's totally yummy. But you've got to allow your senses to enjoy these things without just getting it down. <laughs> so we do we do a smell and everybody talks about, you know, what they smell. Then we do a taste. So then you're gonna wanna taste it. And when you're tasting wine, always give yourself three sips before you decide if you like a wine or not. Because um, it takes that many to get your mouth coated with the the flavors of that wine so don't ever just sip a little wine and say no i don't like that because it's going to change throughout those three sips um and then once again if you have the abil ability you're at a restaurant or whatever it's always good to taste the wine three times and then have a bite of food and see if that changes the wine because it will and you may i have tasted wines before that I just didn't really care for. I've gone back the next day. I've corked it, put it up, gone back the next day and loved it more because it had aerated. Um, or I loved it more because my palate didn't have spearmint gum in it or something else. So um, give yourself a chance to um, really decide if you don't like a wine. Okay. So um, you smell it, then you taste it, and then you want to taste it with food. Okay, your whites, you know, this is going to be really good with your summer salads, that sort of thing. A Chardonnay, you can, uh, of course, chicken or fish, anything like that, nuts, things that are going to be uh, a little fattier are going to be wonderful with Chardonnays. Chenin Blanc, this is one of my absolute favorite summer grapes, wines. Um, it literally goes with anything, and I, it's what I call a porch pounder. <laughs> It just means you don't have to have it with anything because it's so refreshing and just crisp and clean um, that it's just a great sipping wine. So, um, all right, I think we've gone through just about all of the basics that I would tell you if I was just meeting you and trying to get you to um, delve into the world of wine. It can be so much fun. It can be so much fun to do something that's educational you're learning and yet you you're having fun so um i just encourage you to you know don't worry about all of this uh worry about learning more about the profiles of the wine so that you know enough when you're at a restaurant or even at home or picking up something in the grocery store to take home that uh you can make a great choice uh, at the grocery store. But here's the other thing. Come to Bon Appetit, y'all, in Sherman or in Pottsboro. We have a great wine selection, boutique wines. Everything that we carry is not going to be sold in grocery stores or Sam's or anything like that. Wherever you live, if you don't live here, I encourage you to go find a small uh, 
wine boutique store, all right? Because there's gonna be an owner or a person that works there like me that is geeky and about wine and will love to tell you all the things about wine. Don't let it intimidate you. Go into those little shops and ask questions. I promise you, they want to help educate you and, and teach you about the wines that they have. So cheers, enjoy.